Are you about to apply to your dream job? Or perhaps you're participating in a career fair or your law school's on-campus interview process. If so, you want to check out this video in which I'm going to cover several common mistakes law students make in their job applications. In a highly competitive market where there are tons of other highly qualified applicants nationwide going after the very job you want, these mistakes, even though small on their face, can be consequential. The good news is they are easily avoidable. So check them out. Before we get started, I want to thank all of you that despite my absence from YouTube for several months, it's been really busy running Practice Pro, you have continued subscribing, commenting, and reaching out and saying thank you for the content. I hope to be a little bit more consistent with making videos. And if you guys ever have any questions, please don't be shy. How was I inspired to make this video? In all my years, in the 16 years that I have been in the legal field, of course, when I worked at a big law firm, I came across a lot of job applications, people who wanted to work at our firm. And then in the last seven years of running uh, Practice Pro, we help, we have helped maybe 200 plus students to put together the job applications. And I have seen over the years mistakes here and there, but the reason I was inspired to make this video was most recently, about a couple of weeks ago, we opened applications for our law clerk position this summer. And in one week, we had 98 applicants. By the 10th day, we hit 160. And I personally reviewed almost all of these applications, and they were several common mistakes that kept coming up. And um, it would make the person maybe stand out in not the best possible way. So what are these mistakes? First one, when in your cover letter, there is no firm or company name, no salutation, no address. I understand that, you know, unlike law firms, maybe like some, a company like mine, it's not as easily uh, obvious, but you can always look up on their website and scroll to the very bottom or go to the contact us page and you should be able to find uh, the address. The reason why this is important is because it goes with the idea of you know, you must customize things, but also the format of a co correct cover letter. Any cover letter in every, any legal field should be quite uniform. You have your address, you have the date, you have the, uh, the recipient's address, and you have your salutation. Uh, this is especially important for us lawyers because we, uh, we sweat all the small details because we have to. The second mistake is awkward salutations. Let me tell you what I mean by that. An awkward salutation in a cover letter, it's either just not, you know, uh, professional. It's like, hello, exclamation point. It's kind of like a text or like a, um, like an email and an informal email, or it's just pure uh, awkward, like dear attorney, Hoy Samir, or dear paralegal Nikki Hoy Samir, or it could just miss an opportunity for being a little bit closer and warmer. So when you address it as dear Nikki Hoy Samir, instead of dear Miss Hoy Samir, it might just be like, in a, you know, like when you're a kid and you get in trouble and your mom or dad, they call you by your full name. So there's nothing wrong with it on its own. It's not a big deal, but it just doesn't set the stage for this like, um, professional yet warm communication. Now, I know what you're thinking, that to be politically correct, if you don't know somebody's correct pronoun, you don't want to assume things. And you're absolutely right about that. So what you need to do is, if this person's profile is on the company page, or if you're applying to a law firm, all the attorney profiles are going to be on the website. You can look it up and see what pronoun they use. Same thing on LinkedIn. Many people now use the, their preferred pronouns 
or even if they don't have it in their title, if they have a summary, in the summary, uh, you might be able to tell what pronoun they prefer. So if you're able to find the information, then go ahead and customize and make your salutation a little bit um, less um, awkward. If you can't find it, then, um, then maybe you have no choice and you can opt for Dear Nikki Hoy Samir or uh, uh, something of that sort. All right, um, third, this one is super, super important. This is probably the most consequential one. Any kind of misspelling, even if it's just one misspelling, if you misspell the person's name, like in the, or you misspell the company's name, is it one word? Is it two words? What, what are they capitalizing? It shows attention to detail. It is really important when you're applying for legal positions because uh, one, as lawyers, our eyes are trained to see all this nitpicky stuff. It starts in law school, right? And you know, it just continues with you and you get uh, uh, worse and worse, I guess, as you become more experienced, but also because you're applying for a job and you want to show your competence. I'm trying to think, are you going to be a good lawyer? Are you going to be polished? Have attention to detail, all those good things. So I'm looking for evidence to support that you can be that stellar lawyer. So any kind of sloppiness in the cover letter, in the resume, whether it's misspelling something or an extra word in a sentence or um, um, a period, a, a, a second period or like you know, two periods, it's just going to, you know, tarnish your brand just, uh, just a little bit. Uh, this is especially important if your grades are not what you want them to be, right? Because we want our story to be that we can do the work, we can write well, we have great work experience, right? And maybe they like the work experience. Maybe they like, you know, what you were saying in your cover letter. But if they see those unpolished areas of your resume and your cover letter, we don't want them to feel like, hmm, I wonder what this person's grades are. And then when they get to the transcript, they feel that your transcript, you know, your grades are corroborating that unpolished, those unpolished mistakes in the rest of the application. So um, review it, read it, print it, look at it on the screen, uh, have your roommate read it. So at least that template is completely error-free. Next is not customizing your cover letter. And this has many subparts. So the first part is when you don't customize at all. Um, this means when you um, have the letter with no address and, you know, or maybe you have the address and the salutation, but it basically says, I am applying for your summer clerk position. It doesn't even use the company name one time. It gives at least the illusion that you took whatever cover letter you had, your template, maybe stuck the address on there and sent it in. And if you're, the rest of your application is amazing and there are not that many applicants, it might, you might be okay. But if you're competing with 100 people and they customize their letter, then you might end up in the maybe pile and never have an opportunity to come out of that maybe pile. So customize it. The ones that don't customize at all, especially for smaller firms and companies, smaller companies, this is crucial. If you're applying to big law, I think they still want you to customize it a little bit, have the address, you know, uh, mention their name of what position you're applying, maybe have a sentence or two why you want to work there. But this is even more crucial for smaller companies like mine and smaller firms because they want to see if you've done your research, why is it that you want to work there? The second part of this is it's kind of obvious that you may, like you made a little effort to customize, like you put, I am applying to X firm's summer associate position, but there's nothing else. So it's like, we know that, you know, you just, you know, just plugged in that word. It took you 20 seconds to, to do that customization. The next thing is, I call it a tease. But by that, I mean, where you have um, put in the first sentence that you're applying, let's say, to practice for a law clerk position. And um, then after that, 
there are a few other places in your uh, cover letter where you mention the word practice pro. Uh, instead of saying, you know, my work experience and education will be of value to your firm, you have said to practice pro, which is fine. But every time I see the name of the company or if a firm sees that name, they're hopeful. They're hopeful you're going to say something about, you know, why, like, in, like or at least, do you know anything about what we do? Uh, is there any reason why you want to work here? So I call that a tease. So here's my recommendation. When you make your templates, first of all, because you don't want to make mistakes where if you are, you know, um, if you're applying to a company, say you wrote it for a firm and now you're applying to a company. We don't want to have you change that first sentence and you say, I'm applying to X firm's summer associate position. And you know, um, then the rest of the letter references company. Or you don't want to um, uh, say you're applying to practice pro, but the rest of the, uh, the rest of the letter keeps referencing a firm. So if you don't have time to customize really, really heavily, which is fine, we all know you're really busy and you're applying to multiple jobs. We are not the only job that you're applying to. What I recommend you do is once you have that good template, highlight in yellow or some other color, all, not just the name of like, let's say the firm that was in the first sentence and in the second sentence, because you customize and said you want to work for them because of their like their stellar securities practice. But also read the rest of the letter. And if there are words like firm, company, that you might have to tailor if you're applying to a different type of entity, highlight that in yellow. So now you're going to remember, I need to change five things on here. So the first thing you do when you're applying to a new job, you go and you change those things. And if you have time, look up the entity. And if it's just like one simple sentence or two that will get across, just simply gets across, especially if you're applying to a small, smaller company or firm, that you've looked us up and you know what we do. This way you make sure you don't make any mistakes by using the wrong uh, entity. And also, you know, where the like you, know, you have a placeholder in the first paragraph where you're just going to write one sentence after you look us up to say um, uh, why this job is attractive to you, uh, especially. Next thing is, I think this is number five, don't send your materials, any of your materials, but especially your resume and cover letter, don't send them in Word send them in PDF. One, it's more polished. Um, it just, and then most importantly, it's not uh, manipulatable. If, if you send it in Word and uh, I just print it from the preview on my email, it might look like a page and one sentence. And we might think you just you know, didn't care about making it more polished. And it might not be true. You might have, you know, it might just be the way it's printed in Word. The reason you want to, like, you know, um, print it to PDF, pr like, look at the PDF, make sure it's polished and send that. So then that's your work product. And, um, you know, my assistant or myself, we don't by mistake hit something and add a typo to your document before we print it, or it doesn't print in the right, um, in the right format. Similarly, um, this is not really a mistake, but this goes with, since you're sending your materials in PDF, I want to give you a tip to also make it easier for the person receiving it. So if you have named it Resume 2021 and I save it along with all this other stuff, I wouldn't know which one is which I will have to open it. So name it with your first and last name and maybe underscore resume or the other way around and you know, in PDF. Number six, make sure you don't send the wrong document. I know you're thinking, of course I won't, but when you're in a rush and you're applying, you're tired from law school and, you know, maybe you're about to start, you know, your summer job, maybe you just finished writing on to law review and you're in a rush and, you know, you have life stuff too, and it's going to end up, we all make mistakes, but in the job application process, in a, when you make that mistake and send it, you might not recognize it. And if they're really busy and have tons of applications, they might not come. Like if you are one of 10 applicants and everything else is amazing, they might come back and say you sent the wrong documents. 
But if you're applying for a competitive scholarship or a competitive you know, job, they might not give you that second chance. So I have seen cover letters completely addressed and uh, customized with the wrong entity. I have seen an entirely random document like somebody's essay you know, or blog post. Um, I have seen red line, red line versions of the resume or like even a, even a recommendation, uh, a personal re- reference that they sent. Uh, so what you want to do is um, make sure when you're about to send the email and you've attached the document, take a quick look before you send it to see, you know, for at, if, if you title all your things carefully. So from the title, you're making sure it's you're sending the right thing. If you have the time, maybe even open it. Once you attach it, open it one more time, just one more time to make sure it, it's going to take 10 seconds, but it's going to, especially if you're a really amazing candidate and you would have otherwise gotten an interview, you don't want to mess it up by just something that is so easily avoidable. And the seventh one and the last um, mistake is the tone. The tone of the cover letter is more focused on what you're going to take than what you're going to give. And if you guys are familiar with my networking videos or just um, uh, have attended any of our events, uh, you know that um, I always say that whether it's in the networking context or the interview context, your focus should be this person and the value you're going to add. So if the tone repeatedly in that first paragraph and then continuing is, uh, I don't know if entitled is the right word, but you know, the, I am going to come here because it's going to give me all the experience I need, all the hands-on experience I need, the practical experience. That's fine. That's what we want to give. But if you're doing that, it's also important to show at some point in the cover letter the value you're going to add. If you talked about the company's mission statement, if you've customized and you know what this company does, then you know this is a little bit less crucial, especially if you haven't done that. You don't want, doesn't want to come across that it's all about me. I'm applying. I have a good resume. I have a good grade, so hire me. But to the extent you can talk about how excited you are to use your experiences from before, as well as what you're going to learn at this job to add value to the company, maybe it's to the legal team, maybe that it's to the mission of the company. So uh, you're immediately portraying yourself as a team player who is going to become a colleague. Maybe one day I can look at you as one of my partners. And it, it always starts from these initial interactions. I hope this is going to help you as you start the exciting process of uh, looking for your dream job. As you could see, these are really simple, avoidable mistakes. And this will ensure that if you don't get the job, it had nothing to do with things that you could control. We might at this point not be able to control our work experience or our grades, but we can control all of these things and this will help you stand out with the polished, competent crowd. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, go ahead and hit the thumbs up like button. And as I mentioned, if you have any questions about this or anything else in your job search, uh, comment below and reach out. And finally, I would really appreciate it if you go ahead and subscribe to our channel and support us as we grow. Until later, stay well.